Hey guys, Ellie here, and today I want to talk about the cognitive side of my disability. A lot of people assume that you're either very cognitively disabled or you're not at all. And for me, I've had brain surgery, but the cognitive effects of that were only small. Nevertheless, they're still there, and I want to raise awareness about them. The first one is simply slow processing. Especially in academic situations, it takes me a lot longer to process what's needed of me. But it's not always academic. There are moments where I'll just stop in the middle of a hallway and stare into the space for a few minutes, trying to figure out what I need to do. Because I just need to focus on what I'm doing next more than the average person would. I'm pretty bad at doing things without being told what I need to do as well, which is hand in hand with the slow processing. In the mornings, when we're about to leave the house, I need someone to tell me when it's okay to go downstairs. That's partially slow processing and also partially links to my next point. And that is executive functioning. Because they removed the part of my brain that used to do executive functioning, after my surgery, I completely had no idea how to plan. That goes further than just planning appointments or brunch dates with people. It goes as far as planning leaving the house, or my morning routine. That was a hard hurdle to get over, and to be honest, I'm not entirely because being in lockdown has kind of sent me backwards in that. I'm struggling with planning at the minute. But the way I handle that is by putting a whole heap of reminders for everything in my phone, by using checklist apps, and right after surgery, when I was first learning to plan again, I'd construct checklists of things as simple as what I have to do before I leave the house in the morning, just to make sure that I didn't forget something like brushing my teeth. I actually got on top of this really well, because what I'd started doing was throwing myself in the deep end and making sure I was doing huge planning tasks. In grade 11, I organised the table groups and plan for my entire grade and the grade above us formal event. I will say though that being unable to plan anything this year has sent me backwards. There have been days where I've struggled to remember that I have physio, days where I've just missed appointments, and that is on not having the part of my brain that used to plan. It needs constant maintenance for me. This point is the one that got me exempt from exams in school. I fatigue so quickly. I get really tired, a lot faster than most people would. I use up a lot of energy to do what people will consider everyday tasks, because they're just harder for me. And that means that by about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I'm totally burnt out. Between slow processing and fatigue, it's really hard to cater for things like exam situations. You just can't keep yourself awake enough to process but also able to process. This one is something that I actually notice more than any of the others, and that I think a lot of other people wouldn't be aware of, and that's I really struggle in group situations. I think more than anything, that's just a combination of the points I've mentioned so far, because I struggle to process what everyone's saying. Everyone talks too quickly for me to keep up, and as I get tired, my brain shuts down, and in general, group conversations are just a terrible situation for me. If anyone wants to get to know me, they should not do it in a group. I am aware that people who don't have disabilities can sometimes also struggle with group sit situations, but for me, it's a whole new level. I can't keep up with what everyone's saying, which means I open my mouth and someone's already spoken because it's taken me so long to actually get to a point, I'm probably way behind anyway. I'm definitely improving. I'm not as bad off as I could be. But group conversations are just so hard. Those, I'm pretty sure, are the only things that cognitively affect me in everyday life. I definitely don't face many struggles, and I'm very good at coping with the ones I do face. But I just think it's important for people who aren't disabled to understand that some people do struggle with things as simple as going downstairs before they leave the house. 
it can be really difficult to function. And we don't want your pity, but we do want you to understand. Hopefully I've taught you something new today, and I will see you next time. Bye!